so it's James from My Breeder Supply and LoveMyPups.com. So today I want to do another video on the latest iteration of our whelping kit. And we've been doing this now for a few years, so things have changed a little bit and we've got, you know, things have improved as time has gone on. But the basic design is the same. So first, what do you use? Well, what I like to use is I get a crate from Amazon for Frenchies or dogs that are around 25 pounds. This 42 by 27 inch crate is perfect. Paws and Pals is the make, make of this one. Um, there's other ones by Midwest Crate. The Amazon has got one that says Amazon Choice. Um, there, there are some, in, this is about 60 bucks, Amazon Prime delivered. You could buy a similar thing on PetSmart, probably cost you 75 bucks. But here's the deal, there are different versions of these crates, the really inexpensive ones, they're made out of paper clips. They suck, they are so, the, the wires are so skinny, they bend easily, and I've had reports of puppies getting their heads in through the rails to get their head stuck. So go spend, if you're spending less than 50 bucks, you're probably buying the cheaper one, and you probably want to spend another 10 or 15 bucks. So get the, the heavier duty one, and what I do on Amazon Prime, by the way, is I look at people's reviews. If I find a product that's got you know, over 20 reviews and it's four stars or better, then I believe that the product's probably a good product. If it's got a single, single review, it's a waste of time looking at it. Or if it's got reviews that are three stars or less, I never buy anything on Amazon Prime. Just a tip for you, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon Prime, love Amazon Prime, but the reviews are very helpful. Okay, so I already got it out of the box, so we're gonna chuck that away. And here's what you get. So, very nice because when you're finished with this guy, guess what? You can fold it up, put it in the garage, put it on the bed. So it's very easy to put together. It just um, up, folds up like this. Ooh, don't get your finger stuck in it. Then the doors come up. This one's a double door, which I like. It's got two doors, one at the front, one on the side. Um, so this door clips in place like that. We'll just close the door up for the sake of decency. And then the other part screws up like this. And there's a couple of clips here that you get in, but you can figure the direction. There it is. That's it. Good to get. So I mean, it's wobbling around because of my table. <clears throat> nice and solid. I mean, it's a really nicely made, solid, well constructed cage. Now, do you have to use this? No. You can go buy an Easy Well crate. You can buy a Dura Well crate. You can buy build your own crate. We can custom build whatever you come up with. We'll custom build the appropriate heater to go on it as long as it's a rectangle. It can't be round because we have to make 90 degree corners. So this is what a lot of people use. This is what I use, but absolutely not the only way to do it. You got a big dog, get a bigger cage. This is a 42 inch. Got a big dog, get a 48 inch. Got a small dog, get a 36 inch. All right, so we're gonna put the heat tape on this tray. The tray pops out. Protected corners off it. So this is what we're going to put the heat tape on the underneath of this. These are just about. I've never had a dog tear one of these up, not one time yet. So they're there. We want something that the dogs can't get to, the puppies can't get to, the heater tape that we're going to install on the back side, and something that's nice and flat. All right. So we're going to do that next. We're going to put this off the side. We're going to temporarily get this out of our way. And we're going to install the heat. Okay. So, you get a box like this that arrives two to three days. We can typically ship out the day that you order, especially if you order in the morning. Even if it's a custom, we can build it for you that day. So, it's going to come with a thermostat and the appropriate sized heat tape to fit the cage that you bought and some instructions and this one they ordered the whelping adapters for the pig rail pig rail adapters and we'll talk about this here in a little bit and it comes with some extra tape in case you have a tear somewhere all right so how do we install this so that, now let's talk about changes the older systems had a different thermostat that was permanently attached to the heat tape now we have a separate thermostat that unplugs, and the nice thing about this is, if you get this damaged, a dog eats this up, you lose it. This thing gets messed up, you need a new heater tape. We can offer you, either one of these two elements can be bought separately. When you buy the kit, of course, you get both together. All right, 
So here's the heat tape. So it's going to come folded up a little bit, just uh, straighten around, straighten around a little bit. And be careful because sometimes the edges can be sharp. It's tin And that's foil. Russ talking there. Russ and I, we're the ones who put all this stuff together. So if you've got questions, you're going to get answers from me or from Russ. All right, so this, you can see this fits nicely all the way to the edges. If you, normally we build it slightly smaller than this so it comes in a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. If it comes in a little bit, it's, if it sits like this, it's absolutely fine. If it was sitting like this, not an issue at all because the important thing is this heat is under the pig rail or close to it. All right, so get it about where you want it. You can see that we've got to have this really close to the edges. So we're gonna start by removing some of this sticky back tape. Now this stuff is sticky as heck, 3M, really good stuff, does not come adrift. Stick it in the middle, then work your way out to the edges. There we go. And before you stick it all down hard, I recommend that you just kind of get things generally lined up. All right, so now we've got this side over here. So here's this tape coming off. And by the way, if the bottom of your tray has been used before and it's dirty, clean it. If it's really dirty, get some out rubbing alcohol and get it cleaned properly. Because this will not stick if it's dusty. If it's nice and clean, it sticks very, very well. All right, so here we go. This edge here, looks like it wants to be about like that. Just run it approximately. Here we go with this edge. Make sure this is flat. Pull this side off. Come on tape. This video working out right, Russ, we've Looking seen, okay see, so far. I might be jiggling around a little bit, right, but okay. hopefully they right. won't get seasick. So I want to get this nice and, see how I've got this all nice and tight? So I'm pulling it so it's about tight. Now I'll pull this piece off. There we go. Nice and tight. All right, so let's say we got it wrong. Well, before you stick the thing down hard, you can pull it back up and reposition if you need to. But we've got it where we want to be, so we're just going to say that's good. So now we are going to get this all stuck down really nicely. Make sure it uh, sticks yep. firmly to the bottom of the plate so you don't have no future problems. Yep, exactly. So you've got a little bit of a crease there, not a problem. Just rub through it, it'll be fine. You know, the neater you get it, the better, but it's not, it's not, uh, we're not going to grade you on this. The cleaner the tray, the longer it'll last. Yep. Okay. You know, I could rub it down a little bit more, but for the sake of time for the video, I don't want to bore you with that. You get some extra tape. So if you've got some tape that hasn't stuck down very well, you can always put another piece of tape on it. You can always add a little bit of tape if you need to. All right. That part's done. Easy. That's the hardest part of the whole thing, Paul. Okay. So now, Here's our crate, and this now slides in. And by the way, if you order a tray that didn't come with your crate, be careful, because it may not fit right. You don't want to have much of a gap. This wants to fit nicely. You don't want a puppy being able to get down through the side here. So get the right, you know, buy a tray that comes with your crate. This one here's got a little latch on it. That's it. It's in place. So this crate did come with the tray. It did come with the tray for the 55 bucks I think this was. Okay. So I'm not actually gonna hook this up yet because I'm gonna put the pig rail in first. But anyway, basically what you've now got is a thermostat. There's a little piece of hardware here. I'll just remove that. Like that. So that piece of hardware basically, oopsie daisy. Ooh, piece of hardware. So basically this little hole here goes in like that. And now you've got something. And what I like to do on these, you can put this on the wall with a screw. What I like to do is get this somewhere appropriate, but that's a good place right there. So we're just gonna undo this. I'm an idiot. I'm just going to put this in here like this. I'll turn it around here in a moment. I've got the screw in. A little tricky. Yeah. There we go. 
There we go, nice and tight. I like that. That's good. All right, so this, I must just go ahead and do this. This plugs in. This is the thing that gets the power source. You could plug this directly into the wall. Nah. -uh. If you plug this directly into the wall, it'll get hot, but it won't be regulated. And it'll get a bit too hot. It's not, it's designed so it can't burn your house down, but it's gotta be in the thermostat because the thermostat is a thing that physically measures the temperature. And the way it does that is, is there's a temperature probe and that plugs in. Can you see that Russ, if I show this right the side here? There it is, that plugs in like that. There it is, ready to go. So you want to have this so a dog can't get in here. We don't want a dog to get in here and start getting hold of this. I've never had a problem with it, but you just don't want them. It's 110 volts. By the way, this works on 222. So if you're in Europe, we can sell you a product in Europe. We do have to design a slightly different heat tape, so it has to be paired up properly. So if you're gonna buy something for 220, this is a universal plug, so it'll take either kind, and then we will put the appropriate end on it if you live in the UK or something, we'll put the appropriate end on it. But if you're gonna buy this to run off 220, you've gotta let us know, otherwise you're gonna get the wrong version. Okay, so that's now ready to go. And I'll tell you what we'll do, we're gonna plug this in and get this thing warmed up as we go through the next part of the process. Okay, can you zoom in on this? It may need to be uh, configured. Okay, so this is the current temperature, and you can see it's going up, and it's reading 26.4, and you'll see it slowly going up. Now, it's kind of cool out here, so it's gonna take a, you know, normally you'd have this in your house, so the whole thing's being cooled by all this cold air, so I don't know whether it's gonna get up to full temperature out here outside. But basically, what, this will come preset. You want this thing to be at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That is about, a, excuse me, 40 degrees centigrade. That's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the perfect temperature. Now people say, doesn't it need to be 85 or something like that? Think of it this way. Your body temperature is 98.6. Yeah, I think that's right, 98.6. So we're just at 104 degrees. We're only like five and a half degrees above that. It's not very much. So this is just gonna feel mildly warm here. It's not gonna feel bacon hot. And 104 is perfect. It's not gonna, the puppies will love it. That puppies are supposed to have an internal temperature of about 104 degrees. So that's why we set that that temperature. But you can adjust it. So what you do here is you've got two buttons. This one here, we hold it in, it sets the top temperature. And we've got it set for 25, but we're gonna set that for uh, uh, 39. Actually, that's the that's the drop-off temperature, right, Bros? Yes. So we set, whoops, gone too far. It will come pre-configured, by the way. 39. Point zero. Okay, just let it stop, it'll stop flashing. Then this one here, the lower one, is actually the higher temperature. This is the point where it drops, if it goes above this point, it starts to drop, and that one's set for 40. So there we go, we've got this one set, press it in. That's it. 39. And we've got this one here set, hold it in so it does read the reading, for 40. So what it's gonna do is, when it gets to 40 degrees, the heater turns off. There's a little red light here. Can you zoom in on that little red light there, Russ? So if it's currently heating, which it is, it's at 35 degrees, 36 degrees, it's gotta be at 40, so it's heating. When it gets to 40, that light will go out. Until it gets to 39, the light will come on and it will just keep hovering between those, approximately those two numbers. You won't feel any variation here because, in fact, this feels nice and warm right now. It's getting nicely warm, it's gonna work great. All right, okay, so. We now have a crate that's ready to go. That's it. But this particular kit is gonna come with a pig rail. And so, what the heck's a pig rail? A pig rail is, in this case, it's a PVC pipe. It basically fits on the inside perimeter of this cage and gives a place where the puppies can get underneath and not get squished by mom. So, that pig rail is gonna sit just about like that. And this piece here is gonna sit just about like that. And the idea behind this is, is that we've now got an area that if mum backs them up against the wall, her butt hits this and the puppy is completely safe. And guess what? The puppies are gonna naturally gonna migrate to this area anyway. If they're not feeding off mum, they're under the heated area. And so why is this, why is, I mean, I'm kind of boasting here. Why is this such a clever idea? Well. I'm not gonna go through the whole story, you can see on our website about how I came up with this idea. But basically, the problem is always this. Mum doesn't like the extra heat. If you put a heat lamp up here, she's the closest person to the heat lamp, she's getting cooked, she's miserable, 
She's got a fur coat on. Your house is already at 75 degrees. She does not want to be in here with her puppies. She is walking around, stepping up, getting up, just restless. So with this system, there is no heat in here at all. This is nice and cool. Mom's happy in the middle here. But cold is what does puppies in. So what we do is we put the heat just around the periphery where we put that heat tape. So what happens? The puppies are doing one of two things. They're nursing on mum, or they're moving around to find a nice warm area, which they find underneath the pig rail, and they fall asleep under the pig rail. And I mean, I've got now, I think, 700 people using this system, and I get text messages and pictures all the time where people show me their puppies, and there's like nine puppies all lined up in a row under the pig rail, and it's just the safest place they could be. So with our Frenchies, what we do is we, when mum comes back from the C-section, and she's kind of blown off her anesthesia. A few hours later, she's kind of woken up a little bit. We put her in here. In fact, she's been in here the night beforehand to get used to this. We put a pee pad down. We don't just leave this bare. We put a pee pad, one of those pee pads with the sticky corners works great. Stick that down. Don't want a thick blanket. Don't want a thick piece of carpet because the heat doesn't come up through that very well. But you want to have something here. I mean, just something to, just to mop up the pee and the poop, especially for the first week. But not stop the heat from coming through. So a pee pad works beautifully. So what happens? Mum is in here for the first three weeks. She is in here 24 seven with her puppies. We don't take puppies out and, and separate them from mum. Mum is with her puppies all the time. Mum goes outside. Just do a quick pan around out here and just do a quick pan around outside here so you can see our backyard. So what we do is we let the puppies out and uh, there's one of my stud dogs right there, by the way. This is one of my new platinum boys. So he's out. And what he DNA is, is this one? He is. He is platinum. So he is. He is. Actually, we think he's the first double recessive uh, platinum in America. It's one in Europe. So he will be studying here soon. But anyway, he's. So he's blue. He's chocolate. He's cream. He's double A recessive. He's no brindle. And for no more pipe. information, they yep. can find him at lovemypups.com. Yep. Anyway, so what we do is this. That will be there for a second. Right? Will be me time. So what we do is. Mum is in here, literally, with her babies all the time for the first three weeks. We open up our utility door next to our bedroom. We let her outside under supervision so she can go pee and poop. But almost always, she just wants to stretch legs out a little bit. And then she goes from the walk, goes out here and pees, and she is straight back to that door. She wants straight back in with her babies. She wants to be with her babies. And this is great because you are not the mother. You're, you're, bitch, day, whatever you want to call her, she is the mother and you and you want to make sure that she understands that that's her job. And it takes so much pressure off you. So what we do is put them in here and then we put a blanket over this whole thing. And this heat tape is equivalent to about a 60 watt light bulb. It just keeps things just nice and slightly warm in here. Mum's not cooking. Babies are under the pig rail. Warm as a pig. Alright, so pig rail, how do you put it together? So what you buy with a kit, if you order the pig rail adapters, is you get these guys. And they're pre-notched for you. And you get an instruction sheet that shows you what lengths, based on the length of your crate, the width of your crate, how you need to have this cut. And you can go buy a 10-foot stick of PVC pipe that's going to cost you about $8 at Home Depot. And if you've got the measurements, they'll even cut this for you. I don't think they'll even charge you for that. Or you can do it at home yourself. All right, so here we go. How do we build it up? I've already pre-cut this. So. And the reason we don't ship the price is because of the shipping price. We ship yes, the adapters. Exactly. If we well, well, there's two reasons. The first thing is we don't know what size your crate is, so we're going to get it wrong. And the second thing is to ship a 10-foot stick of PVC pipe is going to cost like $50. And so it makes absolutely no sense at all. So these days, we uh, we have you just go buy the piece of PVC pipe and assemble it like I'm doing. And you can find instructions on this at our YouTube channel. Yes, if you want to do it ahead of time before your crate arrives, absolutely. Just look for Love My Pups on uh, YouTube and you'll find us. DIYs on all kinds of interesting projects to take care of your pets. See, I've assembled this wrong. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So this is an example of how you should install the product. Yes. We'll get it right here in a moment. Get it right here. <laughs> well, the great thing about this is 
is that uh, if you get anything wrong, it all just comes apart. And also, when you're ready to go uh, put this thing up in your, uh, you finished with your litter and you want to put everything up, it all just comes apart. Yes, don't so, use pipe glue on it. You won't get yeah, that no, apart. Yeah, no, absolutely. Don't use pipe glue. It's exactly right. Don't use pipe glue. But as you can see, the long end, the rails are actually the edges of the pipe or the T of the pipe is going what would you say that's perpendicular to the long edge well there's two ways to do this i'm going to talk about this in a moment there's two ways you can actually put this together um and i'll talk about the reasons why you might choose one way over the other all right we've got to write this down so just bang it all together square it all up all right there we go okay let's put this on top and you'll get the idea so I've got this so it snaps into the sides, here and here, here and here. And the reason for that is this cage has got some wire here that kind of gets in my way. I could install it the other way where it clips in here and here and there and there. So there's two ways you can install it. But I've installed it this way because I've got clear access right here. So here we go. Now it's a bit of a struggle doing this by yourself, depending on how the... We'll see how I do by myself. It's certainly easy doing this having somebody help you. And you definitely want to measure before fitting. Oh yeah. That's too long exactly and you won't get it in the cage, won't be able to get it pinned up against the wire too short, the wire won't hold it. But it really is simple. Just measure it. Use your practical sense. Come on, a little bit of wrestling here. There it goes. Bang that in there. Almost in. That one's in. See, this is a friction fit, so I can just. A little bit, almost enough. There we go. And it might be a little easier at this point too if you didn't bang it together really hard, because all they have to do yes. is fit in the seam. You really don't have to be tight. And the looser it is, you'll be able to make these adjustments easier after you get it in the cage. Okay. All right. I'm not going to fight this any.